Our special guest this morning is the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett. And Warren, we've talked about a lot of things this morning. We've got briefly your thoughts on the markets, but there's been a lot that's happened in the markets since the last time we sat down with you. Uh, volatility is back in a big way, and that has the average retail investor kind of questioning what to do at this point. It's, it's scared a lot of people. What, what do you think is happening right now just in terms of the return of volatility? Is it something to be worried about what's causing it? Well, if you, if you own stocks like you'd own a farm or an apartment house, you don't get a quote on those every day or every week. Or, and I think you look, you look at the business. And uh, the value of American business depends on how much it delivers in cash to its owners over between now and Judgment Day. And, and I don't think it changes in 10 percent in, in the two-month period if you're, if you're looking at it as a business. Now, you've got anything can happen in markets. I mean, anything can happen in markets. And that's why they don't ever borrow money against securities that uh, markets don't have to open tomorrow. I mean, they, 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 you can have extraordinary events. So uh, I think to some extent you can get some of the instruments that people don't understand very well that have uh, a lot of firepower in them. Like and the volatility can, index can and things that are yeah, tied and to that. The idea of people taking a position, and they're gambling, they're not investing. Nobody's investing when they buy it you know, some supercharged index on, you know, on how the VIX does or something like that. They don't need it in their life. It's an unnecessary in instrument. Now, you know, they will create instruments that the, the public will buy, and, and, and you can just count on that. Wall Street's been doing that for since they met under the Buttonwood tree in 1792 or whatever it was on the exchange. So, but if you're investing, if I'm going to buy a half interest in a McDonald's stand and you're going to run it, or McDonald's franchise, you're going to run it, I look to the business to determine whether I've made a good investment. And I'm, I'm concerned about you know, whether we have new competition, how we do over the years. But it's the business I look at. When you're just looking at the price of something, you're not, you're not investing. I mean, if, if, if you buy something, Bitcoin, for example, or some cryptocurrency, uh, you're not looking to the asset itself to produce anything. If you buy an apartment house, you're looking at how the apartment house does. If you buy a farm, you're looking at the farm does. If you buy a whole business, you're looking at how the business does. If you buy a part of a business, why shouldn't you look at how the business is going to do? Uh, but people get charmed by, by lots of action and the fact that things are liquid and all of that. And it does have repercussions back into the market when you get something like, you know, an ETN arrangement on the, you know, supercharged on the VIX. I mean, where you can lose 90 percent of your money in one day. I mean that really doesn't belong with the word investment. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's a gambling uh, form of activity. Although you've said yourself, you, you talked about this in the annual letter over sure. the weekend and just even at the top of the show, where when you look around for a business that you want to buy, you can't find any at attractive levels. However, when you're looking at equities, you do see that as a good place. The Berkshire has been a net purchaser of equities this year um, in 2018, and that's because you like the deals that you're getting in the market. You can buy small pieces of businesses for less than you can buy whole pieces of businesses. For the premium you'd have to pay yeah. if you were buying the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, so you get a bargain as an investor compared to what I can get in terms of buying the whole business. And it, it, people, if they just think of stocks as pieces of business, they'd be so much better off than thinking of those little things that move around in price. And, and, and I think with Berkshire, we have an unusual number of people as shareholders who just look at Berkshire as a business. They look at it as a savings account. They put some money in 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. We retain it and reinvest for them. But we're, we're their savings account. and and. Uh, that's the way I look at my own stock. That's the way Charlie looks at his stock. And part of the reason that you've been so bullish on equities for many years at this point is the interest rate inf environment. Yeah. You've looked at interest rates and said interest rates are gravity on stock prices. And when interest rates are so low, stock prices inevitably are going to climb. There's been this really weird thing that's been happening in the markets where all of a sudden good news that we got from a good jobs report made people start to worry that interest rates were going to climb and that the Fed was going to raise rates more than anticipated. Uh, people got really nervous around that, and you can still see it. Every time we get up on the 10-year back towards 3%, it, it, it gives investors, or at least traders, I should say, some concerns about what's happening. How, how do you kind of get a that? bond, if you buy a 30-year government bond, it has a whole bunch of coupons attached. In the old days, it does now. It's electronic. But it has a whole bunch of coupons. And the coupon says 3% or whatever it may say. And you know that's what you're going to get between now and 30 years from now. And then they're going to give you the money back. What is a stock? 
a stock is a, a, the same sort of thing. It has a bunch of coupons. It's just they haven't printed the numbers on them yet. And it's your job as an investor to print those numbers on. If those numbers say 10%, and most American businesses earn over 10% on tangible equity, if they say 10%, that bond is worth a hell of a lot more money than a bond that says 3% on it. But if that government bond goes to 10%, it changes the value of this equity bond that, in effect, you're buying. You are buying, when you buy a, an interest in General Motors or Berkshire Hathaway or anything, you are buying something that, over time, is going to return cash to you. Maybe a long time in terms of Berkshire, but it'll be bigger numbers. And those are the coupons. And it's up to you, your job as an investor to decide what you think those coupons will be, because that's what you're buying, and you're buying the discounted value. And, it, it, uh, and the higher the yardstick goes, and the yardstick is government bonds, the less attractive these other bonds look. That, and, and that's just fundamental economics. So in 1982 or three, when the long government bond got to 15%, a company that was earning 15% on equity but was no, worth no more than book value under those circumstances. Because you could buy a 30-year strip of bonds and guarantee yourself for 15% a year. And a business that earned 12% was a subpar business then. But a business that earns 12% when the government bond is 3% is one hell of a business now. And that's why they sell for very fancy prices. So 3% is a long way from 15% that Absolutely. you were just talking about. But, but it, I watched it go from 3 to 15, though, too. Right. Is there an inflection point on that way? Because people think, oh, my gosh, we've gone from 2.4% to 2.9%. That and that's much. a big difference. That's not so much. Historically speaking, that's still the way we should be measuring these things, not on, the, not on the absolute movement or the percentage gain movement over time. 2.4 to 2.9 is nothing if you're comparing it with businesses that earn 12% on equity and reinvest. And the S&P, you can just look at the figures for decades, has earned on tangible equity, it's earned a lot more than that. And it translates into more higher prices than it should. Is there a tipping point along the way, or is it a gradual decline in, in terms Nobody of Nobody knows, things? yeah. But it's, it is gravity. I mean, if... If you told me interest rates were going to be 15% next year on long bonds, you know, and, uh, I, I would, there's a lot of equities I wouldn't want to own now, and I would, I would, I would buy a lot of governments at 15, and I kind of wish I had it in 1982, but I didn't. <laughs> if I told you that the long bond was going to trade at 45 to 5% next year, it makes a difference. But it's been idiotic to own long bonds uh, during the last. You know, I talk about this in the report in terms of our, it's just been idiotic, and. Big public pension funds and all that, they sat there and they owned bonds. Now, they may have bought them on a 4 or 5% basis, but if they go to a 3% basis, they're selling way above par. The, 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 uh, the way people think about it is uh, they do some very silly things. I mean, you lay this out in, in the annual report, but a lot of investors are told, retail investors are told, that they should have a certain percent of their portfolio in bonds. Maybe they're told 60-40, maybe they're told 70-30 stocks to bonds. Uh, that's something that you should do, and that's the safe way yeah. of doing it. What are well, they missing? Some people should not own stocks at all because they just get too upset with price fluctuations. If you're going to do dumb things because your stock, a stock goes down, you shouldn't own a stock at all. <laughs> no, I mean, what, what are dumb things? Selling a stock? Yeah, goes selling down? a stock because it goes down. I mean, if, 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 you know, if, if, if you buy your house at $20,000 and somebody comes along the next day and says, I'll pay you 15, you don't sell it because the quote's 15. <laughs> you look at the house or whatever it may be. It, but some people are not actually emotionally or psychologically fit to own stocks. But I think there are more of them would be if you get educated on what you're really buying, which is part of a business. And the longer you hold stocks, the less risky they become. Whereas the longer the maturity of a bond, the more risky it becomes. Do you feel like that's a message that is getting through to people? It's one that you repeat again and again. And I, I always feel like I was watching a lot of the Olympics. And I felt like what they do in the Olympics is so easy. These guys sailing through the air and doing massive spins on the ice and turns. And then I read your annual letter and I think, oh, it's really easy to invest. And then I walk away and realize it's not that easy. It's not easy psychologically for many people. But I've been, I've been teaching since I was 21. I taught my first class on investments. And I had a class last week with, with uh, 11 schools, 220 students. And, and some of them get it and some of them don't. Uh, people would rather gamble. I mean, the idea that you can double your money in six months, that, that's just going to, 
It's why people go to the races, why they go to Vegas, you know, whatever it may be. They, they, they even know the odds are against them, and they still do it. I mean, it's a strong instinct to want to get rich fast, and I don't know how to do it. Joe has a question that he'd like to ask, too. Joe. Buffett, you haven't tweeted since April of 2016, man. Is that true? <laughs> I didn't really tweet that. I've, I've, got, I've got a friend that's tweeted about seven times. You got me, no follow. I, you, uh, you follow I, nobody. I, I, you, 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 you know. Let me, here, let me, no. Warren, you were coming on Squawk Box this morning for three hours. It would kill you to say I'm going to be on uh, Squawk Box for three hours and tweet that out uh, <laughs> as a favor to, to Becky and me. I mean, make me an offer. <laughs> <laughs> I have never actually uh, tweeted myself, and I don't really know how to do it. You know, and I don't know how to look up somebody else's tweets, but. I'd still will you look at? Like will you look into it? Maybe. Life. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to tell you something, Warren. I, 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 Becky, over the weekend, I was, I was trying to figure out. I mean, I, I get so irritated that I don't need it. You know, not not from people sending, but, but now from looking Twitter? at what other people are tweeting and retweeting, I get I get irritated. And I'm trying to yeah. figure out a way to still get the info that somehow sometimes I get, but just without me being actually part of it. Is it? Have you got a way I, I can do? I, but then I'd still be following these annoying people. I don't Lobotomy? know. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Joe, if, <laughs> we go, if we go to the final game, <laughs> if we go to the finals of the NCAA, and we're there, there together in these great seats I'm going to deliver for you, because yeah. Creighton's in it, God, uh, hope for I Creighton. will have you tweet for me during the game. Oh, I mean, you be can careful what you offer, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> you, Joe, how would you like the keys to the castle with that? You'll be the designated tweeter. There's, God, there's but a I, lot. I've never read a tweet. I mean. I'm, you know what? I'm taking Creighton and Xavier right to the... Now I'm really going to be rooting... Uh, re you know, I but, love it. Becky, I, I love it. <laughs> I unblocked someone today that appealed to me uh, through email, <gasps> and I've never done... I had to figure out how to do wow. it, and, but it's on a probationary... Uh, basis um, at the board of discretion of the uh, at the stress, discretion of the board, but I, I've never done that before. Some, someone got board, yeah, but someone got yeah. back in. But, so you get to do things like that if Warren, you come on, wait. Warren. I'd rather read 10 Ks. <laughs> right, okay. but you don't realize how dangerous that offer is you just made because Joe and I have joked around about getting a hold of somebody's Twitter account or their their information when they leave it logged onto a screen that we sit down at. The things that you can tweet out or the things that you can <laughs> so say to dangerous. people. So dangerous. So dangerous. When you're dangerous. masquerading as someone Well, else. people have pretended yeah. to be me on yeah. both Facebook and Twitter. I mean, Have uh, you guys gone after the people? We, who... we did it for a while. And it just, there's just so many of them. It's hope, kind of hopeless. <laughs> Every time you stamp one out, yeah, people exactly. pop up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.